Here we have 12.4 solving a system of nonlinear equations, problem type one. So notice that both of them are nonlinear. Both of them have an expression with, or a term with, a ver with an exponent. So we have to solve it by substitution. So we need to get one letter in one equation by itself. Now you should, I'm just giving you a fair warning, you should try to choose the one variable that doesn't have um, an exponent on it, okay? And so since I have this term here that doesn't have an exponent, that's the one that I'm going to try to get by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is minus the x squared over, but I still have negative y equal to 7 minus x squared. So I'll divide every single term by negative 1, and I get y equals negative 7 plus x squared, or if I would like to write it like this, positive x squared minus 7 just a little more pleasing to the eye in this um, way. Now we're going to use this to put into the other equation that I haven't uh, messed with. So we're going to have x squared plus x squared minus 7 squared equal to 9. And then I, because of the square here, I'm going to have to actually FOIL that out. So when I FOIL this out, I get x to the fourth minus 14x squared plus 49. If you need to foil that out off to the side so, and then replace that in there, that's fine. Now notice that I put the result in parentheses because if this were a minus, that minus sign would affect every single one of these terms. Because it's a isn't going to change anything. In Safe, then sorry and just to make sure that you're on the safe side put that squared terms in parentheses and then decide later whether or not the parentheses are necessary okay now I'm going to combine my like terms and I'm also going to minus this 9 over so when I combine these like terms I get x to the fourth minus 13 x squared plus 40 equal to zero now if I go through my factors let me see if I can factor so 40 divided by 2, that's 2 and 20, 2 and 20, 4 and 10, 5 and 8, that actually gives me 13. So I'm going to have x squared, because that's the only way I'll get the x to the fourth, minus 5 and x squared minus 8. And if I FOIL this out, I do in fact get these three terms, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set each one of these factors equal to zero. So I get x squared equals 5, x squared equals 8, I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 5, x equals plus or minus the square root of 8, which is also plus or minus 2 square root of 2 if you simplify the square root of 8. And then now to figure out what y is, I'm going to plug these values into this expression that tells me what y is. Okay, So y is going to equal, um, <clears throat> we're going to do two of them. So the first one I'm root of 5 minus 7. It just so happens that it doesn't matter because of the square. Um, you get 5 regardless. Positive 5. A negative times a negative is positive. So I get negative 2 for both of them. So my two solutions here, I have positive square root of 5 and negative 2, and I have negative square root of 5 and negative 2. There's two solutions there from just this one factor. Now from the other factor, um, again, I'm going to plug it into here. So I have y equals, and I'm going to use um, the positive 2 square root of 2. So I'm going to get positive 8 minus 7, which is 1. And then when I plug in negative 2 square root of 2. I also get positive 8 minus 7, which equals 1. So I have two more solutions here, which are two. I'll put them in green because they're my final answers. 
um, I get 2 square root of 2 and 1, and then I get negative 2 square root of 2 and 1. So all four of these are the solutions to this system up here, okay? One of them is a circle and one of them is parabola. So if you can imagine, here you have a circle and let's say you have a parabola like that. There's your four solutions, right? That's kind of what's happening here, okay? Um, now, let's go ahead and look at this one. So again, you wanna solve for one of the variables that do not have any exponents on it and Normally, if I see x's, a whole bunch of x's, then that's not going to be the variable that you can solve for easily. So if there's just a variable, it's a single variable with no exponent, then that's going to be the one that I try to isolate. So I'm actually going to try to isolate y in this problem. So this is the guy I want to get by himself. Um, actually, I'm going to get do the bottom one just because it's more convenient because I can scribble underneath. So I'm going to actually try to get this one by itself. So I'm add 2x squared to both sides and then I'm going to minus 6x on both sides. Now when I do that I get negative y equal to positive 2x squared minus 6x and a positive 4. But I still have to divide everybody by negative 1 in order to get y completely by itself. Positive 6 now and a negative 4. Then I'm going to substitute this into the function that I didn't touch. So the function is going to become 14x squared minus 10x minus all of this that gets plugged in for y. So then notice you do have a minus sign on the outside, so that does have to get distributed. So it becomes positive 2x squared minus 6x plus 4 equal to 9. And I'm going to minus 9 on both sides at the same time and combine my like terms. So I get 16x squared, I get minus 16x, and I get minus 5 equal to 0. And then you would either factor this or use the quadratic formula. Um, I am actually going to do the quadratic formula because that seems a little bit too complicated to try to factor. So x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So let me see, I get negative 16 squared minus 4 times 16 times negative 5. So that gives me 576 over 32. What is the square root of 576? Ah, that's 24. So I get x equals 16 plus 24, which is 40, over 32 reduces to 5 fourths. And then 16 minus 24 is negative 8 over 32 reduces to negative 1 fourth. So I have two x values here. Um, and then now I'm going to plug them in to where I had the y to figure out what the y values are. So for 5 fourths, you have negative 2 times 5 fourths squared plus 6 times 5 fourths minus 4. We are not sure what that is, but let's go ahead and figure it out. I get 3 eighths. And then for the other y value, or I'm sorry, for the other x value, I'm going to get, so negative 1, I get negative 45 over 8. So there are my two solutions. For this x value, 5 fourths, I got the y value 3 eighths. And for this x value, negative 1 fourth, I got the y value negative 45 over 8. So in this problem, I ended up getting two solutions. Now, what's happening here is these are two parabolas, okay? So when I have two parabolas, if you've got one parabola like this, and then possibly another one maybe going downward like that, 
they're gonna cross in two different places, okay? And so that's why I ended up with two um, different solutions. So it all just depends. The mechanics will work out as you're solving using the uh, substitution method. But if you needed to have a visual just to confirm why you have this many solutions versus that many solutions, it all has to do with the graphs, okay? That is how you solve both of those types of problems using the substitution method.